Yo, Buffalo, New York, get those tickets now. I'm gonna be at the Helium Sunday, March 10th. And yes, I will be doing the My 600 Pound Life Live. This is the last year I'm going on tour doing that. So grab those tickets. March the 10th, Helium, Buffalo, New York. Grab the tickets, they don't sell now. My last year doing the 600 Pound Life. So go ahead and get them tickets. So Crispy, man, J-O-N, play me some pimping, man. It's time to go to work, man, you playing. <laughs> You time you you playing, bro? Hey, J O N. Yeah. Hey, J O N. You know that's him saying that, don't you? Uh, it better not, <laughs> not be. <laughs> it better not be. You do know that's him. <laughs> but when then I tweet the voice a little bit, tweet a little tweak here. Trying to figure out how to work this shit. Tell your win, he's a little tweak. Oh, yeah. Been a hell of a day, DC. Nigga, that little walk from the bathroom was so long. I know. I wish we could have just did this should, one first. Yeah. yeah. And, and everything follows suit. Uh, uh, nah, she got the heads. I got uh, the nigga right there. He's from the city. He make the uh, candles, man. He gonna make no sure cap. I get something. He's from the city, right? Yeah. There. And he from I Maryland. That no close. Cap. He, he can drive to DC. Yeah, he said, he 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 from Maryland. No, I'm not, Slim. Who from Maryland? He from Maryland. He must say 10. Yeah, he from Maryland, but he not. He from the city. Say 10. He must say 10. Well, y'all ours, but that shit come from the behind your ears, thug lad, boy. Chief. Northeast, that's a whole nother side in DC, ain't it? Yeah, it's four quadrants. DC separated into four quadrants. Northeast, Northwest, Southeast, Southwest. So them the four sections of the city. Where you from? I'm from Northwest. I'm from uptown. Okay. That's considered uptown. Northwest, DC is uptown. We from up they from Northwest too. You know what I mean? That's why you know the story. You the back D this is who y'all look up to. Oh, the whole city look up to these. The, the, this nick him? You, I mean, I want to break it down. Listen, man. We I can for you to break it down. A whole, a whole legend sitting in, on this chair with us, man. Not just for what he did in the city, but what he went through to get back to it. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, are you ready? Story. Yeah. 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 All right, well, well, without further ado, welcome back to the 85 yeah. South Show. Yeah. Now, DC, for the people who have been following right. the 85 South show, right. they don't even need no introduction. Because right. this is actually a follow up mm -hmm. that we called from. Like, this is. But this is a part two. This part two. Mm -hmm. We already said that this was going to happen. Part one went crazy. Okay. And then this, we just going, I wanted to pick up from the story from where we ended part one. Where we started, where we stopped. Till right now. Okay. So, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna hand it over to Chico. Uh-huh. Cause he can fill in the blanks. Right. Tell these people what we got going Cause this shit personal on. a little bit. Oh yeah. It's beyond personal. Oh, okay. Like, it's historic. It's right, like, right, you right. know, it's historic for me because, you know, I'm born and raised in the city of Washington, D.C., man. And, you know, one of the things about coming from D.C. is that I think our history kind of gets diluted because we haven't had anybody be able to tell the story in a way where people can understand the true essence of where we come from. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that reason is because a lot of the people who could tell the true essence of where we come from didn't make it to be able to tell the story. Even right. they, you know, lost their lives or they out here lost and just became a product of the environment or they've been incarcerated, you know what I mean? So the unique part about this particular story is that this brother right here, Tony Lewis Jr., has been an advocate in our city for years. Mm -hmm. I mean, since I was a youngin, trying to stop the violence, trying to, you know, get the city to a point where we, you know, aren't known for a lot of the things that we are known for outside of the stuff that we want to be known for and the mm -hmm. culture that we create. And throughout that entire time that he was helping the city, he was doing that while his father was incarcerated for over, what, 34 years, right? 34, 30, years. 34 yeah. years of incarceration. This man has been fighting to get his father out of jail on a charge that he was charged with years ago. You know what I mean? Bullshit. As we all know how the system is set up, you know, they railroaded a lot of people and he was one of the ones that, that you know, caught that that time. And um, a lot of people didn't believe it was possible, man, that, that this would be able to happen. But he did. He been believing since That's right. for years. He believed that one day I'm going to get my pops out of jail and I'm going to fight whatever fight I got to fight to make sure that my pops see the light of day. And a lot of people didn't believe it. But when he came here the last time, we sat and we said, man, 
Pop's coming home, and when he come home, you bring him to the 85 South Show. So right now, I want to introduce you. I already know Tony Lewis Jr., but with great pleasure, I introduce to you Tony Lewis Sr. Welcome home, sir. Welcome home, sir. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Welcome home. Welcome home, man. Welcome home. I've been watching you niggas every week. Wild and out. I've been watching you funny. I've been watching you niggas on TV, and I'm just, I'm honored to be here, man. You know, no. especially my homie right here, man. man see somebody that make it. What's crazy is, you know what I'm saying? I came home. I was home for my show at the MGM in, uh, at National Harbor. So I had told Tony, like, man, you know, we had talked previously. I said, man, if Pops want to come to the show, let me know. He said, man, we got a couple of things we got to do, but I'm going to let you know if we can make it. I'm in the mall, Pentagon City. I'm at the Nordstrom's. I'm standing in line. I hear some, I look back, like, wait a minute. I look back, it's this nigga. I yeah. said, nigga. When you what? <laughs> Slim, it was so crazy, man, and it was so good to see you in that moment, man. But my first question to you, because we didn't already talk to, the to my first question to you is, man, how you feel, man? Oh, I feel amazing, man. You know, freedom is like, uh, you know, I can't describe it. You know what I'm saying? 34 years of uh, incarceration, and uh, to be here, you know what I'm saying? And my son with me, and we've been rolling, man. And the, you know, I, my grandkids being with them, family. And uh, you know, being here with y'all on this, 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 I was watching y'all on TV on Wild and Out, all you crazy. Man, <laughs> we laugh every week, man. We watching y'all. We got to tune in to y'all. You know what I'm saying? What's up? And uh, now to be here and uh, be talking with y'all, man, and seeing what y'all doing, how y'all done grow this, y'all, this brand and this show, man, is amazing, man. Yeah. And I know a lot of black people that feel the same way. And so, I see all you black people that's here, man. So for those that that might not be for me, that might not have watched us in our interview. Give him a little bit of backstory on who Tony Lewis Sr. is. Um, okay, I'm going to give you what I was what first. What you was first. Yeah, what I was what you, first, you, you know what I'm okay. saying? Respect. Um, uh, grew up in Washington, D.C., Hanover Place, Northwest. Um, started selling drugs at like 14 years old. Um, you know, poverty, you know, you grew up there, you know how things was, you know what I'm saying? That's all we knew on our block and the surrounding areas, you know, of crime. You know, that's the only way we could make it, you know what I'm saying? Wasn't nothing about you no know, jobs and school and all that kind of shit. That was the job on the block. You know, we looked up to the older dudes and that's all they did. Sold drugs, robbed and did whatever they did. So um, that was the life in the, in the 80s, you know, the late 70s on, into, the, into the 80s. And, uh, you know, I was a single, single parent household, number of my mother um, with five, six siblings. It was rough, man. You know, somebody had to get it. Somebody had to make it happen. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so uh, everything was right there to make it happen. And, you know, um, that's how, you know, I went out there and made it happen. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, wound up getting caught up in the late 80s, you know, Ray for Edmonds, you know, in that case right there. And, um, you know, got life without parole for my charge and, you know, the dealings. And uh, it really wasn't about. Hanover Street, where I really did my thing at. It was, you know, Jai fucking with him, and he was already on fire, which I didn't really you know. But anyway, that was that story right there. But two right. different things, yeah. But that's pretty much the history of, you know, my situation. Now, a lot of people are familiar with the, the case that you were talking about, because it's a heavily publicized case. You know, a lot of people hear about DC in that era, the murder capital, and all of yeah, that stuff. No in the intro, but I remember being a very young man and they airing the trial on television. And it was just like the way that they would bring you out of court. And we had Kurt Bone come up here and talk yeah, to yeah. us. You know what I mean? And um, like being as though you were there, like describe that environment at that time. Cause y'all was the first case to really get the type of yeah, no doubt. look and time that y'all got. Yeah, they um, all that shit was new to everybody, man. You know, we ain't know what what they had baked for us. You know what I'm saying? It was, they, they just had passed a couple of, you know, the, the crack jump, the 100 to 1 ratio compared to, you know, 1 to 1. So that rate, they're going to shoot your, shoot your fucking sentence to the moon alone. Then the mandatory minimums, you know, they had, had that came into play. And, you know, we young motherfuckers out there, we out there getting money. Motherfuckers ain't reading no papers or books and doing all that kind of shit. You know, I used to watch the news and stuff like that. But even the lawyers didn't know exactly what they had baked for the black, young black man all around, not just in D.C., but all around the country. And we just happen to be, the, you know, by us being the nation capital, say we're going to start with these niggas right here. Damn. And we ain't know. 
Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, man. So when they came with it, man, this shit was it's crazy. Life without parole, like that shit was nothing. Just you know, throw your ass away, nigga. And several other ones on our case with, with like 30 people. So so uh, you know, bulletproof courtrooms, anonymous jewelry, all this shit. They never used nowhere. Not even with the mob, they ain't used that shit, which it was designed for. But they use it on us. And uh, yeah, so. Uh, yeah, they, they they fucked us around good, you know what I'm saying? And so the, most of the young people out here now, these same laws and all that shit still in place. And they want to, you know, they want to throw your ass away too if you fall into this shit. Talking about the young, other, young black men all around the country. Uh, so, you know, you can't get taken because that's what they did f- to me. And if it don't be for my son, I, I'll be fucking still in that prison cell right now. Yeah. But everybody ain't got a him, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, if you don't mind me asking, what was what was the technicality in, in your case where they were able to give you so much time for a nonviolent offense? Yeah, that hundred to one ratio shit on the crack. Yeah, that's that's what really did it. I was charged with both drugs, the powder and the crack. But for the powder, it's, it's one to one ratio when it comes to sentencing. But for the crack, I mean, for the yeah, for the powder, it's one to one ratio when it comes to sentencing. But for the crack, for every one gram, it's a hundred grams. So you just add that up if you get charged with kilos of crack, and shit is, is you know is off the chart. You ain't you ain't got no win. You so automatically. So they weighing it. They weighing it equalized like it's a hundred grams, even if it's one gram. Yes, yeah. so one So you gram. get caught with one gram, you gonna get charged like you got caught with a hundred. Hundred gram. Yeah. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Hey, what's good? It's your man Carlos Miller back again with BetterHelp. If you had more time in your day, what would you do? Work out? Finally fix that car? Read a book? Check on your homies. Many of us yearn for more time in our lives, but what would we do with unlimited time? Identifying our priorities and making them a focal point can help us incorporate what truly matters into our schedules. Therapy can assist in uncovering those meaningful pursuits, allowing us to allocate more time to them. Consider giving BetterHelp a chance. If you're considering therapy, it operates entirely online, offering convenience, flexibility, and alignment with your schedule. Learn to make time for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash 85South today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash 85South. Yeah, so, yeah, that's, that, that's what's the, the technical or injustice or however you want to call it. And then all these many years forward, now all of a sudden they like, okay, we, that shit was wrong. We know it was wrong. So we're going to take it down to 18 to 1 instead of 1 to 1. But it's a lot better. 18 to 1 is from 100 to 1. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. And um, that's, what, that's what really, uh, you know, fuck, fuck the fuck the Because, I mean, after speaking with your son, you, you were close to coming home a few different times, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, we thought. Yeah, we thought. So that's what I'm saying. Like, what was the difference in the this real one, or in, you know, as opposed to the false stars? I think really it was his fight and his effort, because it was like you know they they already had it set. Even when I thought I had something, they put me in front of a vicious judge that wasn't going for nothing. One of the toughest judges in D.C. So every time we would have something, he'll find a technicality. Oh, you was. You was a partner of Rafe Edmund III. You was y'all, y'all introduced crack cocaine to Washington, D.C. When you put that label on a motherfucker, they never want you out. You know what I'm saying? We yeah. introduced crack cocaine to a whole fucking city. What proof, are you, what proof do you got? This is what the prosecutor's saying. What proof do you got of that? How the fuck you know who the first one started smoking crack in D.C. or who first brought it to D.C.? There's no way to determine that, but that's the label they put on us. So that really was, that, that shit stuck. And not to mention, some of the violence that wasn't personally attributed to me, but the conspiracy as a whole, mm-hmm. when they say yeah. you're the leader with another person, then you're responsible for whatever went on and everybody who got, might have got you know, any violence upon them. So uh, that was why when we thought, every time we thought we had something, the vicious motherfucker was like, nah, your black ass ain't, you know, fuck what that, deny, deny, deny. He got the right one in Miss Brittany K. Barnett out of fact. Texas. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah and, and, That's who did it. How, how did you find it? So actually, uh, Pusha T connected Brittany and I. Um, you know, that's my man, and, and, and you know, he been trying to go to bat with, with you know, re- regard my dad, you know, with me when Obama was in in the White House. Um, 
and uh, actually uh, even sent me in his place. When he got invited, he couldn't make it. He sent me in his place. That I could. Be, I was at the White House. Obama didn't show up for this meeting, but his handlers did, right? So I was able to raise my dad's, uh, you know, case dead, right? Um, but then Obama left office. Um, and, and so one of the things I think is, is critical, though, to this, during Obama administration, right, first of all, they had a big clemency initiative, which we were trying to get him in. So it's one of those times I was talking about, I thought we was close, right? I'm like, damn, I'm here pushing, pushing, while they pushing, you know what I'm saying, all different people um, in the community, of course. And then, boom, Obama leave. But Obama, during the Obama administration, they had passed uh, something called the Fair Sentencing Act, right, which created... The 18 to 1 disparity, my father just, just it took it from 100 to 1 to 18 to 1, but it wasn't retroactive, meaning mm -hmm. anybody already in jail couldn't benefit from it. it. Mm -hmm. Fast forward to um, 2016, 2017, um, Hakeem Jeffries uh, uh, introduced the, the, uh, what we know now as the First Step Act in the House. It passed through Congress. Donald Trump signs it into law. What that did, amongst other things, but the critical thing was it made the Fair Sentencing Act retroactive, right? But the caveat was you only get one shot at the joint. So if we file this shit and it get denied, we That's can't it. file it again. Mm. So initially we went after something else that me and Pusha collaborated on with other folks was a reform called the, the, um, the two-point two reduction. reduction. We applied for that to Dad's point about the judge. We got denied. So they, they said they sold too much drugs. It wasn't they four people I like that. Too it. much. Yeah. That, that's you, we you never knew they Too much drugs, thing. nigga. You know, hey, hey, you got niggas with. <laughs> big shout out to Big Meats, though. That's my motherfucking man. But he, you know, his yeah. his, his charge was way as the that. drug amount. So think about that, right? In the and context he got of what you know, yeah. About. Somebody that the world kind of know, Big Meach, yeah, actually was granted this same reform that yeah. he got denied because saying that Meach qualified. But he didn't. And through my same lawyer, Brittany so, K. Bond. Same that, lawyer, too. So it's not nothing we pulling out the air. Yeah. That's the same attorney, right? All right. So we get denied from that. And, and I, I don't want to say these denials. I really want to let people know how, how like catastrophic that shit is when you hear that. When you put all the work and when you know you're delivering this. Uh, uh, not, not only Brittany was able to craft this motion, or this beautiful motion. Because all the things that, you know what I'm saying, that was brought to the table. Faith-based leaders, uh, uh, city council members. People in the community, me, I'm the preeminent, preeminent reentry person in my city, and maybe probably you could put me up against anybody in the country when it comes to this. I'm his son. It's nothing they could worry about public safety wise, stabilization wise, none of that, right? All that's covered. And you you get in and, and, and the judge says no to that. All right, cool. Knock us down, we get back up, all right, we're gonna go in under the first step act. And Brittany was able to um just for her legal prowess, man, uh just was able to find a case that our judge had ruled on was very similar, right? But I'm saying in my mind, like he's saying, his man ain't nothing. Every time we think somebody's case is similar and it's somebody that did, they like, nah, they found he a ain't the same yeah. though. Yeah. He a different, you know, they a different level, you know, all that. Long story short, um, on, 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 on March 16th, uh, we get a call, Brittany gets a call, she calls me saying that the government does not oppose, right? There was something I was like, what you mean? Never, never heard it in my life that the government didn't oppose the motion for immediate That's release, right? Or for recents or whatever. So I'm telling him, he, he, he ain't trying to get too sightsy, like, all right, but we don't know. Uh, Friday, so that's a Wednesday. Thursday come, nothing. Friday, I go to New Orleans. I get off the plane in New Orleans. Brittany FaceTime me. And all she said was Monday. Yo, what's up? Spring is here and summer is around the corner and I hope you've been back in the gym like you said you were. But if you need a little help springing back into action, if you know what I mean, what I mean, what I know, Blue Chew offers a distinct online service providing chewable tablets containing the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis and Levitra. But at a significantly lower cost. <laughs> These tablets can be taken anytime, offering flexibility for planning and seizing spontaneous opportunities. Wink, wink. The process involves signing up at bluechew.com, consulting with one of their licensed medical providers, and you know, upon approval, they means yes, uh, yeah, you will receive your prescription within days, yeah. Don't even gotta wait a long time. The entire process, is conducted online. I mean, eliminating the need for doctor visits and uncomfortable conversations or waiting in line at the pharmacy, none of that. 
will happen. Additionally, Blue Chew's tablets are manufactured right here in the U.S. of A. And we've got a special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew for free when you use promo code 85SOUTH at checkout. Just pay $5 shipping. That's BlueChew.com, promo code 85SOUTH to receive your first month free. Visit BlueChew.com for more details and important safety information. And we'd like to thank Blue Chew for sponsoring the podcast. And I was in New Orleans two days, man, Monday morning. March 20th, I went and got my father, man. Yeah. Shit was crazy. It was crazy. I it, but I it's a beautiful, man. It's a beautiful no, story, I, but let me ask you this, the follow-up, though. What was the moment with, that hit you that said, I got to do it? Right. I got to be the so, person so that got to do it. I got no brothers it. and sisters, right? Um, you know, man, I was, I, was, I was approaching nine years old, right? April 15th, 1989. I turned nine the next month, right? Uh, my father got locked up, slim, like, my whole world changed. Not just my world, my family. Everything changed, everything, right? So I ain't never, you know, as I became a man, I really, I think I feel like I became a man that day for real. Because life just became, uh, my childhood pride of that was very supportive. We had uh, everything in the world went, you know what I'm saying? They just took homes, like he was gone. And, and everything about our lifestyle was different. Then they shipped him all the way to California, you know what I'm saying? He was in California for the first 13 years. And I come up, we come up on the same block. I mean, we talk about, it was, the 80s was bad, but the 90s was wicked. Bitches. Was wicked. Bitches. I'm in the bullseye of that shit round around our way, you know what I'm saying? And as I, you know, navigated through the toughest terrain there is for real, uh, and I bumped into the work that saved my life, you know, starting to help my community uh, and through my service to others uh, and me helping. I mean, so many people. I've been doing this shit 23 years, you know what I mean? Far as helping my community. That, it was nobody else to turn to because nobody wanted to touch. Nobody ever believed that he was coming home anyway. Not even homies. Like, nobody, they not that tone. Now, that's how people felt. But through my service um, to other people, you know, um, through my contributions to, to the world, I feel uh, it wasn't nobody else that was even better suited to do it but me, you know? And, um, but this never was or has ever been just about us. The ultimate goal, obviously, was to, you know, help my dad, but I've helped thousands of people for real. Yeah. And, uh, you know, one of the things I think moving forward, you know, I uh, think these, the 100 to 1 ratio, the, the mandatory minimums, uh, our president, you know, Joe Biden, a as a senator, was the architect of those mm -hmm. laws. Um, and he ran on righting those wrongs, right? And as we approaching, you know, 2024 with the next election coming, he ain't done nothing. Nothing. I did nothing. As it relates to this issue, nothing. I mean, he done computer chips and climate change and what he could do on gun reform and infrastructure bill and, and, and uh, 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 try whatever he could do around student debt. All the other promises, you know what I'm saying, for real, for real, he didn't, he, he done that. But what about us? What about the things that, that you've told the black people and, you know, the VP as well? You know, Kamala comes, she was a, she was a, 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 the, the attorney, attorney general, general of California. You know what I'm saying? And was responsible for a lot of locking a lot of folks up out there. And she, even before she became his VP candidate, when she was the presidential candidate, she also talked about righting the wrongs around criminal justice reform. And, and for me, from a neighborhood like the one I come from, Mass incarceration has been the most catastrophic thing in our community, right? Because it, it has economic impacts, social impacts, emotional impacts, mental health impacts, not only on the people that go to prison, but the people that, that they the belong family. to. Right? Yeah. And, and, and so when you talk about all these young dudes out here spinning, all these young, ask them who they belong to. Ask them is their father locked up, is their uncle locked up, their big brother, their mother, their uncle. You gotta, and, and, and so you start to see the connectivity between those that, that are impacted by mass incarceration and a lot of these other traumas. Um, for this president to not exercise his power, and you don't need nothing. Congress. We talking yeah. about he can exactly. power the pen. Can yeah. yeah. these sentences, Joe Biden. And when, when, when Wayne and uh, I saw Wayne was at, uh, they had the 50-year anniversary joint, and this ain't, I say, let me preface this. This ain't no, no, no shot at Wayne, and I'm just making a point. He was just as, in D.C. Saturday at the 50th anniversary joint at Kamala Harris's house. You know, uh, Trump gave Wayne a pardon, and he commuted a uh, Kodak sentence. And I was just thinking to myself, I just want to, damn, bro, I wonder if he was advocating. Like, I want them to be able to all use that platform to talk about the men. If you're a street dude, this type of stuff is just not political, really. 
this street business. And it's, like this, it's nothing but people from the so street. So many that's been good men by. still behind Friends. the motherfucking walls and doors. And women. This is probably why I'm here. Not just to, uh, you know, s s of course to support my homie right here, support the show, you know, and uh, you know, but there's so many other people that's still in prison, 20, 30, 40 years in. That's good men that's working in prison with the young dudes coming through every day. They trying to give back and. And, and they, they, they just wasting away. Joe Biden, he can take that pen, commute a lot of these rehabilitated men that I put my name on, like, like you know, the Lord and legend, uh, Tiny. Yeah, sure. yeah. Uh, Timothy Williams, Timothy Williams. Uh, James Kirby Burks, uh, 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 motherfucking uh, uh, my man Silk, you know, uh, 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 Jermaine Lewis, just numerous guys, man, that I cannot not speak about and, 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 and put these, because I know these men are good men, they paid, they're not getting out of jail free. They didn't pay their debt, some more than their debt, back to society. Sure. And, 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 and Joe Biden ran off of uh, prison reform and having compassion and, uh, you know. Uh, now his boy, now his yeah, boy. Yeah, now his now son. His family, I, I, right? Yeah, now his family. Yeah. So the shit, yeah, Hunter, shit, yeah, you know, Hunter. everybody make their mistakes, it. you know what I'm Facts. saying? We ain't so, man, uh, like you, yeah. you now are in a position where families like ours, you're gonna be, because he going to prison. Right? And, you know, when the powerful and the connected and things like that, right, it's always different, right? And people are always able to say, oh, well, people make mistakes, or, you know, he got so many good qualities. They, they never yes. see that in, in us. And as somebody who, all right, my father went, but I'm the only person, like, round my way who ain't never been to jail. Like, seriously, I've done time with everybody, right? It's not a, 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 a singular thing. It's my dad that's singular in that way, but every, I've done prepping all around this country, visiting people in federal prison, you know what I'm saying? All around this country. And I've helped people return, right? And, and, and fought for people and their families, that people can move past their mistakes, right? Exactly. Uh, fostering a, 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 some form of, of, of redemption. You know, uh, in 95%, most people don't get life without parole like he had. You know what I mean? That's the other thing. Like, get that. He had life without parole. Explain you know, that. Explain that to a lot of people that yeah, don't understand you have life that. Without parole, your release date is death. Yeah. You release that's when it. you die. That was, so that's the sentence. It really should be a death sentence, not no motherfucking life without parole. Because yeah. you ain't no It's really, It's really out. like an illusion of like, yeah. You, <laughs> there's a slow they want you to sentence. think you can get out. It's just as well they say, though, man, we're going to put that need on your ass and get rid of your ass now. What the fuck is the difference in It's a slow death. It's death. I if you don't ask, overcome like, that shit. You know, because, like you said, coming from the city, man, and growing up in that environment, like, my father was killed when I was two, you know, so my, I'm, I'm a yeah. product of the yeah. city and the yeah. streets of the city. And I know from experience just my own personal journey through life coming up in the city, how the absence of my father affected my actions and a lot of the things that I yeah. got into. Yeah. And I thought that that's what we had to do because of the environment that we came from. But in the reality, I know it was because of the absence of my pops. Yeah. Being as though you was away for 34 years, like, how did you still influence him in the way that you did to keep him from doing what was innately in him to do? Yeah. Unfortunately for me, I never had that direct source. So I just had good men, my uncles and everybody yeah. that was around that kept me from going too far. Right. But you being away, how was you able to keep that instilled in him to keep him from following your path when you a legend in the city? You a legend out the streets of the city. A lot of pressure. A lot of him, pressure yeah, on Slim. Pressure. Like, you know, the nepotism will come from having people that come out the streets like you. Like, my uncle Reggie a legend uptown. So I know the nepotism where you can show up and set, because you, such and such people no doubt. come in and get one of these slim yeah. and go up the street. Yeah. So how did you, from being all the way across the country, how did you manage to navigate that relationship being in prison? As much uh, communication as possible. You know, and big ups to you, uh, Chico, for overcoming, you know, your father getting killed in the streets, man. And, and, and you still, where you at now and what you have done, man. Because a, a lot of homies, man, like in jail, on the street, they motivated by you, man. They talk about and see what you what you doing and what you did, and be like, damn that motherfucker. And they know what you they, they know what you come from. The same thing where we came from, and even worse with your dad being killed at an early age. But anyway, um, big ups to your uncles and stuff who came to support. 
And my son had that similar type of support from his uncles, even though all them was in the streets too, grandma, you know, just a whole fucking crime family, actually. <laughs> but yeah, that's, how, that's, that's all we, that's all we knew. That's, all, that's real oh, shit in D.C., shit. man, you know what I'm saying? You don't know, man, yeah. that shit, boy, oh my yeah. God. Yeah, and, but you know, the phone calls, the letters, and me constantly, um, you know, trying to pound at him and show him what happened to me, and don't let that be you, you know what I'm saying? And I know, like I said, by him being my son, there's a lot of pressures that was due to just what you said, Gio coming at him, trying to send messages through him, Hey, trying to set up deals through him and or, or trying to offer him, hey, you know, you Tony Lewis, man, take these joints. And he, he would talk to me about some of the things, you know what I'm saying? But it took a lot out of him, not just because he ain't had to listen to a fucking thing I said because he was getting older now and he, he can he gonna do what he going to do, you know what I'm saying? But I give him a lot of credit for uh, seeing the right way to go and what happened to me and being like, uh, and all his friends, all his friends in jail, murdered, uh, just every time I'm calling, he going to a funeral. It's just, you know, you know, the, the, just all that. So um, it wasn't that much of me, but a lot more of him and uh, the right decisions that he was making or made. Oh, let life. me ask you this. 34 years incarcerated. How you keep your mind strong? You taking all my questions. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was like, we thinking of the same shit. I'm just like, that, I this won't have brutal, that man. shit. This shit brutal, man. Um, and I was been saying this to a few other people. First, for real, God, for me. You know what I'm saying? Most that's real. That's real. Seriously. Well, I pray to many, pray to many motherfucking nights, man. And all I was asking, don't let me go crazy in this shit. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Because I mean, that's the that's the that's the main factor. You know, you know, to make it, you gotta the mental, you gotta keep it. It can might go a little weak on you or whatever, but you gotta keep it, man. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, man, it, that that that's the hardest part, man. Because prison they got so fucking bad, man. They current shit in there like. I want to. I want to ask it was the ten, was the first ten or the middle t ten or the last ten? What like what's the worst? Is yeah. What was the, the like the last ten or the last? Yeah, about the last ten. Is this it got so bad and the, the dudes that they bringing in, man, it's just so watered down and fucked up now, man. And you know all this hot shit, the niggas coming in, fake paperwork, making up stories. It's just so much shit that I was never used to with coming in. And when I came in, man, it was real shit going to real niggas, real, you know, even the other races, it was real shit. And then a bunch of gang shit, watered down gang shit, shit just ain't, it ain't, it's, you can't, it's hard to bid because I, I, I don't feel normal around this shit because this is a bunch of fake shit, right. you know? And so it's bad, man. Not to mention what the feds then turned into, I'm saying, as far as the wardens and administration. Every time you get a new warden, I want to outdo what the last warden did by taking every fucking thing you got and treating you like shit. So I want to do do it even worse, you know. So um, yeah, it's, it's no place COVID, to be. COVID happened too. Yeah, was, COVID fucks tough. shit up. Yeah, it's man, tough. constantly locked down. You know, going to the hole every time you get COVID, we we'll put you in a hole in quarantine. It's just your cell you can have COVID. They put any motherfucking cell which and you get COVID, and then you got to go to the hole, even though you ain't got COVID, but he got COVID. It's just a lot of stress, man, a lot of pressure, man. And uh, and it, in prison, it, it's all about the money in prison. That's, that's what it came to. I'm saying as far as the administration. They want you to spend every dime, you know, on these the fake beat up fucking tennis shoes and bullshit that they sell us in the commissary, feed you worse as they can, so you got to buy little snacks and commissary. So the whole... And they, and, and they talk about it among you, you know, because they getting the kickback, getting the money, high-ass prices on garbage that they selling. So it's just, it's just awful, man. You know, it's terrible. So for all you young niggas out there, you don't want that prison shit. You know what I'm saying? So it's still clear, and man. Uh, do what she calling them to. He be an entrepreneur, man. Y'all doing it, man. You know What's what I'm saying? What's your favorite shit to do now that you're home? Like, um, time has changed so much. This is literally yeah. a whole nother world. Yeah. So what are some of the things that you are finding pleasure in now? Mm -hmm. <laughs> My granddaughters, my mother and granddaughter, and my son, man, family shit, you know what I'm saying, for the most part, for me. Because um, that's all I dreamt about. I was just saying, man, if I ever get out, man, I want to take my granddaughters to school, you know what I'm saying? I want to uh, You didn't get to take do it. Shitties, but I'm doing it all what the time, What was that? Man. I mean, you know, like, cause so you know, when you get older, that you shit. lose that excitement for shit, yeah. and then it's like, to, I, to be back me, into the world. Yeah, man, it's, it's the best, man, you know what I'm saying? It's just seeing... <clears throat> the smile on their faces and, you know, because I communicate with them every day in prison and they always tell me, Pop-Up, we doing this, we doing that. We can't wait till you come home so you can 
And all the time I'm saying to myself, yeah, I, you know what I'm saying to them, I can't wait to come on too, baby. But I know my chances. I know shit is fucked up because I'm getting denied left and right. But I know I got my son fighting for me, but it's an uphill, like you know, David and Goliath, you know, son, just like you said earlier, man, right. against the whole United States government. Yeah. You know, when they said that uh, you introduced crack cocaine to Washington, D.C. And that label, once they put that shit on, that shit follows them. Every time I go up for a motion, the judge right in that shit. You know, you, and it just... That shit is, that's tough to overcome, man. Yeah, you know, tough. Coming out the city, man, you went to jail in 1989. You come home in 2023. Y'all niggas, watch what we, everybody thinking the same <laughs> shit. I'm just so listening. <laughs> man, this shit just fascinating. Oh, man. You come home in 2023. Damn, you been alive. That's what I was thinking in my head. I'm like, you, you see two dimensions. You see when you... Left, and then you see 2023 20, shit. It's but then like, it's like, can you imagine with no explanation of the shit that's in the middle, just come home and be like, what the fuck? And, and you have to adjust. <laughs> well, I'm, st I'm still doing it, but 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 loving it all at the same motherfucking right. time, the whole right. process, man. Because, like I said, that that prison shit, that shit is brutal, man. It's it's uh, it's brutal, and uh, so much shit going on, man. The drugs, the motherfuckers. It's like. Every day, it's like you know, like being out on the, on the drug strip. Everybody, hi, everybody. Because the pressure's so great in there, that's the only fucking release, man. Motherfucker, give me that K2. Give me the uh, chemicals out of Unicor. These motherfuckers are using any and everything to get high if they can. They don't give a fuck, man, because the high pressure's the so big. Yeah, they got, they got yeah. like, not cleaning chemicals, but the chemicals like in Unicor, which they like make glue and the tags, you know, every... Uh, most of the federal prisons got their own industry. They make different, in Cumberland, where I just came from, they're making the car tags. Oh. And so all the different chemicals they use for the paint and all that shit, they they, they bring it from Unicorn, they're selling that shit. And the pressure's just so great, man. Dudes in there, man, uh, can't take it. And uh, the whole release is getting high. A lot of motherfuckers in there, the mental the mental, uh, mental illness, that shit is off the chain in prison now. So, yeah. so, think of, so, so talk about the people that, like I know people who have the institutionalized. Right, they go in chain gang and they get accustomed to chain gang, and then now they're about to come home. It sounds crazy, but you got some people who scared yeah. to come home. Yeah, I had a few people tell me that before I wound up getting a blessing, and uh, dudes was getting ready to go home, and they be we'll be talking, and they'd be like, "Man, man, I'm, I'm kind of I'm like, what the fuck you mean you scared, nigga? You just did ten years, you ready to get out tomorrow? You talking about you scared, scared of what? I wasn't." Understanding what, right. and he was like, man, you know, in here, man, we, you know, we got everything set, man. You know, I got my own cell. Like, <laughs> nigga, you want to stay in that motherfucking cell? Cause I don't. Let me tell him, like, is anything we can change? And you stay the fuck here. I want to go. Right. But, but you right though. Nah, seriously truth, though. Before you got out, you knew you was going home. You ain't getting nervous or nothing. Yeah, at I all. got a little nervous, but not, not because of the fact of going home, but uh, it's the just joy of freedom. Things. Yeah, the joy of freedom and my. I knew, I only knew like, what was it, like a Saturday or something I knew, and I got released Monday. So it was only like a day or day and a half in between that I didn't know, I ain't know shit. Man. Your last day. I couldn't even motherfucking sleep. I couldn't even, <laughs> man, I couldn't nothing, man, because right. I didn't, you know, and, you know, not knowing what to actually uh, respect, respect like, with, with freedom, you know what I'm saying? But I, I don't give a fuck. I was ready to go. <laughs> right. yeah, I don't give a figure that shit out. Give me the fuck. I, I, don't, I don't care. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm saying. For those who scared, yeah. though, it's like, how, why? I know they like, I got this, but it's like, are you scared to enter the free world because of how somebody may not accept you or? The pressure of not what? fucking up and coming it's, back. It's, it's like what I was just great as, bro, like, I can understand that fear yeah. of somebody who went to jail in 1989 in Washington, D.C. and come home to 2023 yeah. Washington, D.C. 26 and 62. Like, put it like that. That's also less. You go to jail 26 years old. You come home 60 years old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you come home to a city. You left a city that don't exist no more. Yeah. Literally, where we come from, especially our side of town, has been stripped For of everything white. that you knew yeah. when you left the streets. Yeah. So... When you come big. home and look at Washington, D.C. now, like, do you still feel the same? I mean, I understand the freedom part, but just as a native, like, how does it make you feel being as though you left the streets with it looking like this and came home to what it is now? How does it make you feel, man? When, when I'm among some men, good, you know, good men that I knew back from the day, my son, a lot of his friends, Booby, a lot of, you know, good men, um, 
I feel normal, you know, like back somewhere back in the day. But uh, aside from that and away, away from that, yeah, it is like it's kind of like shit foreign somewhere. The gentrification shit is really, man, uh, you know, no more the barbershop that you used to go to, the black owned store down on the corner, all that shit gone. The, uh, all these little cafes, they sitting on the dogs, they walking the dog, nothing against them though, but the shit is, it, it just make you feel, you know, like you like, damn, where the fuck am I at? This ain't DC. This ain't DC. No more, right. you know? All the way. Yeah. And it, it, I know yeah. how much it break my heart yeah. because we was out and so it happened, you know what I mean? Right. Yeah, I would say that Anthony Williams was the start of the city getting, you know, reconstructed in regards yeah. to this and they started uptown. So, yeah. They literally started, you know, on, on, on the avenue right by Petworth. And, you know what I mean? When they started building a train station and all that, I was going back and forth to school and seeing, like, them strip. And then they once they tore down the Woolworth on 14th Street and all that good shit, we, I'm yeah. like, man, what are they doing? You know, this was crazy, bro. Like, shit. As a, so I'm, I'm 43. Um, and I'll block, right? They, they, court 43, court right? Down, and was that part 85 or something like that? 86? I remember about by 90, they moved out everybody that was that lived on our block that was on public assistance. And this is one of the things that I, that dawned on me. DC was so bad, right? At, at, a, at a certain point. A lot of the houses, the homes, uptown got a little different, but even uptown, a lot of the houses, the peer families that live in those houses where we thought they owned those houses, you had people that was renting for 30, 40 years just because you couldn't get nobody else to kind of buy it. Nobody wanted to live in these, now these same places, right? So they moved. So, I'm, I'm, so from 90, so from when I'm like 10 to the till, probably till I'm like 7, 18, yeah, so the whole 90s, it took like that 10 year span for people to start actually coming and buying houses. It was like maybe, 40%, I grew up on a block where only 40% of the houses had somebody that lived in Right. I went to Dunbar, right. so I was right there. Saying. I was right there by y'all block. But I started you know to see the gentrification. I went to Dunbar. Went to you went to Dunbar? That, yeah, I graduated from Dunbar yeah. too, man. And it's like, y'all area, you know, the whole city knew y'all area because of the history of, you know, everybody just, you know, knowing. And, and like, I don't know if you knew that this was going on, being as though you was incarcerated, but I'm sure you probably could tell from how many of us was coming in and out of the federal penitentiary system throughout that time. But we have a warped mentality in the city. I know my generation, like I'm younger than him, but our generate like we was into that type of shit. Like we was glorifying yeah. the, the oh, ignorance yeah. because that's really all we had, yeah. you know what I mean? Else, you know what I mean? We was proud of that shit. Yeah, like we was proud. really, Proud of the, the 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 shit that you know. Even once you became a victim to it, I done seen so much murder and death, and been in so many situations. But still, it's like you you become numb to it in a way where it's not just a numbness. It's a man, shit, fuck. It's, it's, guess it's, it's my life. turn. It's you know what I mean? All right, man. Ain't nobody gonna ask no more hands. The the incarceration shit is sad. Tell me about some of the fun you had in the streets before this shit happened. Jesus Christ. I didn't, didn't want to get into it because you know, the motherfuckers might be watching. I didn't want to ask. The best week you had in the streets. I was, I was listening to, to Shannon Briggs when he was saying about the, the fight, Sugar Ray Leonard and Marvin Hagler. You were there. And me and my son was there. Yeah, we was there. You know what I'm saying? So we were just looking at each other and um, just saying, hey, he remember for sure. Him and my two nephews. I took them to Vegas. Um, first time, first coming down, first time been on the plane since then. Just, just hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Hang by south, yes sir. Yes sir. It was good. It was, yes, good. Uh, it was good. Yeah, but uh, Super Bowls, you know, um, in the Redskins in the in the motherfucking eighties, and you know the three three joints in a row, and just uh, uh, two of them rather. Uh, and just, just the casinos, Atlantic City, Vegas, just uh, the big crap games on the streets, hundreds of thousands of dollars, niggas bringing bags up and full of money. And it was, it was some of the, the up, best man. years that's, of my that's, life. That's the best years of my life. Right $100,000 crap games in the hood. Yeah. And I'm going to say this. Nigga, I, 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 you know, I think one of the things about the DC experience you kind of touched on, but I think it's relevant. Um, it, it is a, it's something we didn't, we haven't had anyone, particularly like from cinema or music, to really 
talk about. Explain right? the story. These things, right, that happen with them that you be hard pressed to really find. Mm -hmm. Nigga, I'm sitting here creating a movie so, in my head. The more like, y'all talk, I'm like, somebody got to know about I this shit. I seen yeah. the Kurt Bone documentary, right, that came out. Remember the Kurt Bone did the documentary yeah. on Rafe? Yeah. I remember watching it, and the nigga said y'all niggas was be sitting outside serving ounces and half ounces all day long. I said, nigga, if I can serve ounces and half ounces all day long, I might take that risk now. Like, nigga, I might, nigga, ounces and half ounces all day, the 24 hours, nigga, is just serving whole. And I'm just looking at this era of time in the city. And you know, it's so many of us that have been affected by it, but being as though you was dead, like, when did you know that it was, when, it, when did you know, two, two part question, when did you know that it was like, oh shit, nigga, we didn't hit, we didn't hit, this shit about to be something else. And second part, when did you know it's, it's over with? Cause you always feel it before they come. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Um, when did I know that we really, really hit? As far as was like, nigga, oh, the money we, we in a different. When, yeah, when my man, uh, Cornell Jones, a lot of people don't know his name or know his story, but you know from the city. Mm. When he came home from federal prison, and uh, you know we was we was always we was all, I was already doing some small things, fucking with a dude that wasn't from around the way. He was a cool older dude, you know, but he was fucking me around. I was young, I ain't really know, but I was moving the shit. But and Cornell, you know, he always kept his ear to the to the streets, even though he was in prison, and he had been hearing about. So he had sent a few messages like, "Yeah, I'm coming home, such and such, such and such." Uh, you know, what you doing, you know, like that. That's, I'm going to make that shit look like it ain't nothing. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, oh, yeah, okay, Corn, I see you when you know. So, he, you know, he come home. And uh, he, we go to dinner or whatever. He talking to me and they're like, man, what you uh, doing? What is this? How much is it? And I tell him, he said, what? He said, man, I, man, I got, that shit is nothing. So I'm still, I'm listening to him, right? I was like, nigga, ain't no way you just coming home from jail and you telling me you can do all this shit right here in this and 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 sure shit he he could and he did and that's when I knew, you know what I'm saying that the price that he was getting them you know Jones coming from Miami is quick Ray fat yeah so that's when I knew that uh, it was. Tell me what what, what date date that for us? Bro. Yeah, this was like uh, my fucking 80, 83, 84, around in that time. Man, he probably yeah. had a number so sweet. Yeah. I'm getting them bitches for six yeah. to five hundred. <laughs> <laughs> what? And, and mind you, this Ray Redman shit that I wound up getting life without parole, he wasn't even known of the pitch wasn't even in the picture or nothing. This Ray Redman shit. So this was all handover shit, nothing to do, you know what I'm saying? So even way before him, I was already, you know, taking off and going, you know what I'm saying? Way past even what I what did wind up doing, the little shit with him. That shit wasn't, you know, but they made it out because they wanted him so bad and the city was murder capital and they said, we gonna get you niggas and get y'all all this. You know, and that's, that's kind of like, you know, where it went from. One of the scariest nights in the streets where you like, shit, this, mm -hmm. ooh, for heart, where you can hear that heart pounding. Yeah, yeah. You know, back then, you know, niggas was out hunting, that kidnapping shit, that shit started back when we, you know what I'm saying? Um, uh, back in the 80s and, and, and back in our um, time, wow. City, and uh, they tried to muffle, try to bring me a move, you know, with the kidnap shit and da da da. But I had already got the word before it, you know what I'm saying? And uh, that was, you know, some scary shit, you know, to be honest. But uh, they ain't succeed, and uh, you know, that was that was that. But yeah, that was oh, scary. Man, you know? but listen, you gotta know how what that means, Slim. That's the difference in that era to now. Yeah. Now niggas is tweeting, yeah, niggas just try to kidnap me, Slim. <laughs> but I got away. Fuck these bitch ass <laughs> niggas. But and you didn't even move. <laughs> <laughs> like, bro, I'm leaving the state. <laughs> man, some niggas trying to kidnap you. Okay. Like, but but, but the second part of the question, Shit, when you know no. they was coming? Oh, uh. They started calling him off to the grand jury. And, uh, you know, most of the times, you know, people you know, and they'll tell them, don't tell, you know, but there's always going to be somebody that fuck with you. Be like, look, man, the motherfuckers called me to the grand jury. They was talking, asking about you, grateful the whole. And that's when I knew I say, and I told him, he want to laugh that shit off. I said, these motherfuckers coming, man. Ain't no way they got no grand jury here is coming. Now I named the first motherfuckers on, and they ain't coming with something. They always get an indictment when it's a grand jury, mm -hmm. you know? You know, and that's when I knew. 
I said, this shit coming, but I ain't know that it was coming like this. I'm like, I ain't never got no drugs around me, ain't no, no drugs in my residence, so if they come, fuck what they gonna do. Right. But the motherfucker wasn't hip to this conspiracy shit and 848 and RICO and all this kind of shit. Those was the laws designed for the mob. But they started using them in the city. They said, you know what, we gonna get these niggas, because especially for the ones who smart enough not to be around drugs, never, you know, sell drugs personally themselves, this how we get them. And that's what. And so that's basically, how it came. you got caught off. He say, she say. They never had any yeah. no thing drugs. to say. No we drugs. got them. Never. It's no but, drugs. Uh, and they raided all my joints and they never found it. No Y'all, drugs. But you, bro, you a fucking street hero. I would have lost my goddamn. I know. <laughs> that shit. Thirty-four yeah, year nigga think that shit that's ain't nothing to play shit. with. Yeah. That's serious. real guy shit. Yeah, I need trip. Like we the we the we the generation. I ain't get caught for like shit. I'm forty. I mean, in your yeah. generation, so it's like. You know how mad I be? I ain't get caught with nothing. We only we only saw them days where everybody went away. You know right, what I'm saying? Right. It's like now, like you said, it's a time we in a, a phase of our life where these guys are coming back, the uncles and the cousins yeah. and the fathers and the shit like that. So now it's like we finally getting to hear that side of the story, yeah. you know what no I'm doubt. saying? Because we've no been led with this narrative, like yeah. you said, for, for, for like your son, 34 years, 20 years. Yeah. It's so crazy. it's like now we're getting to see the other side or hear the other side. It's like another and, It's like another form of lynching. You just got away. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. Yeah, man, and you, you know but, that, that life without parole, Slam. You being nine years old, I want to get both of y'all perspective on when you heard it and when you heard it. Like when you found out that they, when they gave you that sentence, like what what go through your mind when you hit life without man, that's parole? It. Make, make your legs buckle. Make your, seriously, man, your motherfucking heart skip some beats. You know what I'm saying? Because that shit is serious. Life without parole. No parole. That's, you just do life. Just continue. And we kept it secret from him because he was young. But in a few years, he, he found out on his own and he, cause he ain't actually, he always like, dad, when you coming home, dad? I never give him a time, but I'm, I'm coming home, son. I'm, I had to, I couldn't tell him that shit. That shit was crushing to me. So I know what it, what it did to him at nine or 10, 11 years old. You know what I'm saying? But go ahead, son. Nah, you know? I mean, I just, I was gonna say that. Like, I ain't know. Yeah, he ain't well, know the severity. I know he ain't. the day of the sentencing. In mine, it was at Quantico Marine Base, right? Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, a Marine base, not a prison, you know what I'm saying? Like, That's where the visit. FBI trained. Yeah, mm -hmm. now, yeah. So you visit at the at the cell, <clears throat> right? And I never forget that. Like, we walk up to the cell. His cell was like glass. I don't know how many, it was like eight or nine of them. His cell was at the end, we walk. And he was wiping, you know, wiping the tears from his eyes and shit. And he just was like, um, you know, like, you gotta be strong, you know what I'm saying? I'm nine. And my father tells me, you got to be strong. And I'm like, all right. You know, I don't even know what that really means. But in my little mind, you know, uh, that meant that whatever we about to go through, we're going to go through it together. You feel what I'm saying? And, and I, ain't, I ain't quit 34 years, and I was there every step of the way. You feel me? So, yeah. Yeah. Man, that's glorious, yeah. man. Like, so man, you got a I'm hell of a story, you. man. Yeah. Like, I, what are you looking forward to? What's the next step? Like... I know you just looking forward, fuck the yeah. time and all oh, that. It's to, like, we now it's time to live. The what, you, what you looking we're forward to? trying to get to? this story on the screen, you know what I'm saying? We gotta make it happen. Trying to get this story on the screen some kind of way, because there's so many facets, shit that we, we can't even, we're not gonna talk about even here. So it's just so much more to, you know, because it's basically two different, two different drug conspiracies in two different parts of the city. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's just yeah, so many stories. You caught up in the, the early <laughs> part of the <laughs> yeah. government yeah, conspiracy but, yeah, type nah, shit. And, um, yeah, but we, you know, we want to get the story out. Not just, you know, of course we want to make a few dollars. Ain't no secret about that shit. But yeah. we also want to uh, try to deter the young people, man, from taking this path. You know, not even with drugs, but even with the, more so with the violence that's going on. The senseless violence, the stupid shit. All oh, you hear it every day, all the time. Carjacking, <clears throat> you know, motherfuckers shooting women, shooting kids, and all that shit. We ain't never respect none of that shit, man. Yeah, yeah, and still right. don't. And I'm a, yeah, Our I'm own right. people, we don't respect that shit. When you come into prison and you, we hear you got that, we don't respect that shit. Even if niggas think that that shit is respected, when you come to prison, that shit ain't respected, man. You know, so um, yeah. that's one yeah, of the main reasons we the want The difference in, like, you know, because 
the the violence it was more violence in in, in our in that era right. in the eighties and nineties, but it was, you know, and I don't know if you can even say this, but I'm gonna say it, it was it was respectable. It was you it was get your money something. You yeah, and you it felt like then it was relegated to those that were that in were that in that in the right. lifestyle. Now it Not seems like it whoever yeah, yeah, nobody whoever. off limits. Nobody's yeah. safe, and that shit it can't be respected, especially. Yeah. When it come to our women and our children, man, and our mothers and our yeah, no. Nah, so nah, I, I say that to say uh, to what's going on now. You was in prison for thirty four years. What happens when these young niggas come into jail? Mm. What happens, so, man? So much shit. Yeah, I ain't draw, you huh? sit back and you be looking like this. The nigga that killed three people. What the fuck? And this nigga acting like that. Let them niggas carry. What the fuck is nigga? You just killed three people out there. And you here like. Like, what the fuck? You know what I'm saying? And it, that's how I rock them. That's, a, that's, the, that's the reality of a lot of this shit, man. Because them niggas in there got them motherfucking swords and them knives. And they, you ain't got that gun no more, nigga. You in right. there with the wolves now. Especially if they start them off in, the, in these penitentiaries. These FCIs, you know, medium security is a, a lot more calm and peaceful camps. But if you start off in a pen, like my first 13 years and shit, that shit, that shit brutal, man. You know, motherfucking joke. So the would be the killers that. A lot of the young, you know, that's down here popping that gun and that shit like that. If they and they go come in and they send them to them to the to these penitentiaries across the country, that shit is some serious, brutal shit. Serious, man. Especially in our city, with like you know our population is pretty small, so Everything it ain't federal. everybody know. Yeah, and it's federal, but everybody know you kill this motherfucker here. His uncle probably in the same prison you can go to. His cousin. That shit be popping off like, yeah, popping off like shit. So you busting that gun out there. When you come in that motherfucking prison, you better be ready. Ain't no gun, though. You going to have to go hand-to-hand -hand warfare. You locked up since 82, <laughs> yeah, nigga. nigga. <laughs> shit you serious, came man. You have been motherfucking smoking All back woods, busting yeah. nuts and shit. This, this nigga out here working out, going hard. Yeah, yeah. Shit as hard as this motherfucking <laughs> wall. <laughs> Yeah, man, it's, it's, it's serious shit, though, man. Watch cartoons, though. They don't but I, I just hope that, man, you know... I knew a nigga on the street, he was a gangster, but when he went in, boy, the boy was in there doing some things, and you like, hold up, not shawty. <laughs> I was on the street, had everybody terrified. Yeah. You telling me he and not, yeah. he and not iron and draw? That's real shit. Yeah, I mean, a nigga be in that iron and draw. Bro, I seen, I mean, through my, through not just my, my, my work, but just my life, you know, you seen dudes go in, and it might be a young dude, I might have came to his school, or he was in one of my programs, I might go into the prison for work, you know, talk to the DC guys, different federal institutions. And I see the look in his eye, it ain't that look that was on the street, like he's scared. Or I get a call from him, whether it's him or one of the other homies, hey, Slug, you know this, you know, young, and he said, they ain't pressing him, we scared, you, whatever. You want me to look out for him? You know, like, not him. You know what I'm saying? But but the, the other thing, I mean, it, the other part of this, I'm talking about even for the strongest of the strong, you ask the question about mental health, his mental health and his strength. You know what I'm saying? I had a, I had my uncle, one of the, the men, my mother's brother, men I, a man I regard probably as one of the strongest men I've ever met in my life. It's a tough you know, me, life. Me too. I looked up to him for you know sure. And, and my uh, uncle on, on January 1st, 2012, he had life without parole as well. He killed himself, man. Yeah. I'm I saying, fucking believe I'm, I think I'm still processing that, right? <laughs> Eleven years later, but I'm talking about I seen what the reality of like them long sentences. I'm talking about this is strong. This mother don't be dick, don't nothing. But he a me a man's man. Beast. Been in prison. What Greg been like three or four third, third, third jump, federal yeah. beef. Ten, eight, ten, and then yeah. the third one, life without parole. And if you told me pick anybody in prison, anybody in the world, who would? commit suicide in jail. He wouldn't even be in my thought nowhere close. This man, it was a beast. Mm -hmm. And that pressure, that shit, man, yeah, that, it just, that shit, it, you, you just saying, don't, that mental shit, man, it's, it's... And I used to, and think about this, right, and I'm thinking, like, I'm saying, damn, that shit happened over great. I, from that point on, every time I pick up the phone, I'm like, hey, what's up, you all right? Like, you know, how you trying to gauge his <laughs> mental, because, I mean, it's just a way of mouth. Know. Straight, man, yeah, 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 but, 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 but he never, he never said the words, like, we, we never talked about that Gregory thing as far as, you know, comparing me with that. And I knew that that was in the back of my son's mind, because who, why wouldn't it be? He's like, man, my dad, because I had did way more time than Gregory, because yeah, Gregory had been out, back yeah, in, back out. Yeah. I, my shit was straight, you know what I'm saying? And, but I never wanted to bring it up to him to put it in his mind, no thought like, but that shit was never in my mind, but it just it happened to his uncle. So it was, 
you know, it was but another that thing, that mental existence, right? Yeah. There, the, the 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 most important thing I think the takeaway for me was always like, and he was always very transparent about. Um, never made jail seem cool, like it was I, like he was comfortable, like he liked Fuck none no, of that. And everybody else around us, man, I'm all right, what's up, slug? Man, we in this joke chain. Like like yeah, yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> so like so for shit, his, 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 uh, so I used to be like, damn. Um, but what it does, though, to see somebody, like what, what the existence does to somebody when you constantly dehumanize what that does to one's humanity, you feel me? And like, that's what's walking out them gates. People that's like, every day, they being dehumanized, right? Um, and that can erode your humanity. You can start to like, want, not only want to flee, it's not a weak thing. It'll make you harder. It, yeah. it, it beats you down. That exists, that's an unnatural existence. So it also puts every other relationship in jeopardy. The relationship with your mother, with your children, with your siblings, with your woman, you understand what I'm saying? With your friends, because it's unnatural. You got to really work to maintain. Don't people, you don't make it 34 years bonded like we are, bro. You, it don't happen. I'm not even patting us in the back. I'm more thanking God because I'm telling you, that shit is not uh, uh, feasible. It's, you don't make it yeah. through it. No in our community, black and brown, but particularly in black communities, man, we are really in the spotlight, in the bullseye of that exact thing. You understand what I'm saying? And so that's why we're trying to work so hard, not only to reform what's happening to people in prison, keeping families connected, working around family uh, reunification, trying to make sure all the barriers around housing and employment are removed. I ain't talking about just in DC, I'm talking about in America, right? Because that's, that's essential to um, the longevity uh, and the sustainability, the stabilization of our families, bro, without it, man, shit gonna continue to go. It's gonna get more and more pervasive. It's gonna get worse. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I ain't mean to go on that side. Nah, nah, nah pop your shit. These niggas ask, need to hit his shit. I gotta ask, man, because this something, it, what you just said just sparked a question in my mind about the connection that y'all kept. You know, me not having a father growing up, I always wonder, like, that moment that I've watched all my partners go through with their dads where you kind of like, you know, face off in the I'm a man now moment that you have with your father. You know what I mean? Did y'all ever have that moment? And when was that moment? Do you remember when it was? I, I, when I remember, um, mainly was, I probably was, I was probably in my early 20s. And my father, like we, we come from a, 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 a top down structure. I mean, he and I, but then also in our environment. Like, it's a, it's a hierarchy. Yeah, right? yeah, I yeah. It's, my, it's, it's respect. I know my role. Facts. Even he in prison, I'm out here, but I know my role. And I felt good honoring it. And my uncles that I told, my uncle Gregory, my uncle Boo, my uncle Alvin, Cornell, we met. Like, it's a, so I get that. I know my role in it. But when you in jail, it's hard, he, he, it's hard for him to see. We talk a lot and all that, but he's not seeing me growing up. And I'm still that nine-year-old boy. Right. You know what I'm saying? He telling me like I forgot it was more so about like what I'm doing. Like, oh, like hey. Was that about was that was that about the letter, son? When I was you told oh me yeah, mailing. that's the, exactly what the, the the so you know it's every time a nigga be locked up with him and they go to another institution, I'm a fucking mail man. Mail, like, man. Oh, he, man, you ain't sending that. That's said. exactly what it was. Hey, hey, and, and, and 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 somewhat, like, son, son, right? What, son, what I thought you lost the letter. What yeah, happened? You was pressed like I you ain't sending yet. I'm like man, then I couldn't find it. That's what happened. Yeah, you I couldn't, couldn't find the letter. Nigga ain't wrote me. It was something important. I needed that motherfucking letter, man. I don't know. Well, this nigga talking about he might be a whole motherfucker. I don't know what's in the letter, but my point is I'm trying to survive. I'm just like, they shooting at us out here. Right? I'm trying to get through life, and you talking about a letter like I ain't got nothing else going on. You know what I'm saying? But so it was like that, right? We had like a like yeah. yeah like, that was one of our first. You know what I'm saying? I was mad as shit. That's what I had. <laughs> and I ain't like a yeah. goddamn letter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey. Look, I'm but I can only say that shit over the phone. See, I ain't in it. I can't be the nigga face. See, it's just all. So that I'm evolving, I got a lot of shit going on. Right. And one of the things about it, I always pride myself on at the end of the day, I've all, whether it's a money order, whether it's going to meet somebody, whether it's a call, call, I always did what you asked me to do. Yeah, Don't go did. all the way off on me because I missed one time. And I'm and I'm out here, but it ain't nobody out here with me. Yeah. And my mother, my, my mother's schizophrenic, right? And, yeah. And, and that's burned. I lit, you know what I'm saying? At that time, my mother hadn't moved. She was still with me, you know what I'm saying? Just a lot of shit going on. And I ain't got nobody to turn to, right, at that time. So 
Um, that was that, but what that did, every little, uh, is the beauty, the beautiful thing about us, um, and this is just real shit, and I'm, I'm so grateful about this. Every faux pas we had, every whatever, that shit ain't never last long, right. and it only, it only made us stronger, you yeah. know what I'm saying? I mean, every one, you know what I'm saying? We definitely had them, like, you know, yeah, go ahead. It's, it's, it's inevitable, you can't, you know, father some relationship. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I'm, just, I'm sitting here looking at it, I'm like, bro, this shit is amazing, yeah, yeah. bro. Like, of course, y'all. Contact with each other, man. What does it feel like now to be out here catching up with your son, seeing what kind of, like being, like being, yeah. seeing what kind of man he is? Yeah. Seeing what kind of man he is. Learning them all over. So proud of him. I, you know, even from, you know, from prison every day, son, I'm proud of you, man, because I be hearing so much and seeing, he keep me with a rack of pictures. He always made me felt like. You were missing I'm, out. I'm, yeah, yeah, I, I, wasn't, I wasn't missing out. I was there, you know, just with the little means that, whether it's pictures, the phone, the letters, the you know, the, seeing them on the news, seeing them on the TV, whatever the case may be, um, you know. So uh, it's just, and then now we can just be on a, like on the plane. We just look at each other, and or he might say, "Dad, can you believe this shit? We on the plane together. We going, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Or we could just be in the, you know, driving together, go eat breakfast, and we just look at each other. Sometimes I'll say, it, sometimes he'll say it. Just, just those little small things. That shit is just amazing. From where we, we was at, we dreamt about six months shit, ago, five months shit, ago. Bro, bro. We never like the the beef. Like we lit it. Like I'm come, I come downstairs and I'm like, man, he right that there. Ghost. <laughs> 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 that shit crazy. Fuck. <laughs> I can imagine, man. Because like, I felt the same way when I seen that nigga at the mall. I was like, damn, that nigga right there. What's up with you? I've been trying a little bit everything. What's your shit? But still trying to. It's fruit. That's what she like in, in prison, you know, they want to give you one apple, one, you know, whatever it might be that day, one banana. Now I can buy all the motherfucking fruit I want. I don't give a fuck. I went and bought it. But if boss don't, you know what I'm saying? Hey, we want to see what the shit. Yeah, my son, we're we, we leaving the mall. What did you buy all this shit? Bananas. You know what I'm saying? Like, we was in the, the, store, the grocery store, store today. But, but, you, but you know what? He's telling me how much shit I can get. The fuck? What you think? I want them apples. I want them plums. I want them bananas. All that shit. But you know what? Even through over, you know what I'm saying? Overcoming adversity, man. Just, I'm just, I'm just saying back observing you feel me i really just want to stay in peak game and just really feel the vibe of someone who actually did what a lot of us escaped from see what i'm saying yeah like i know a lot of people who done who probably don't even know they gangster and did something one time and doing a 40. yeah doing yeah. a 50. like you don't even know if you like this shit or not and you got 40. You got 40. Yeah. You didn't get a chance to, to figure it out. Yeah. You feel me? And to actually look in the face of someone who's done it, not only done it, seen the success from it and seen the downfall yeah. from it. Yeah. But the overall picture I get to see, God is still in the picture. No doubt. And the love that y'all got for each other, that's the only way it could have worked. Yeah. Only way. Only way. The only way. Down. And that's the most, I mean, for the end of the day, though, bro, like how I see it, how I see the world, that's gangster shit. That other shit ain't really the thing. Right, right. right. Exactly. Family. Yeah. Being present, loving on your people, taking care of your people. Never you giving up the fight. I'm saying, be, that's, that's gangster. gangster. And that's what we got to <clears throat> uh, continue to put. And I ain't, I'm not, even in all my, where everybody know, know me, like I'm a positive dude, but I ain't on no preach type time or none of that. Right. I righteous trying, though. I yeah, I'm super well, righteous. You understand? But I ain't no, I ain't, I ain't no sound bite nigga. I'm not. I'm, I, but I do it. Right. Right. And what I mean by that is, you know, we, 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 in us, we're all in the same boat. In my mind, in this, mm -hmm. that we come from environments where we, but we show people that there's different routes. He didn't, in his day, there weren't those. It wasn't. We didn't exist. People like us didn't exist. Right. That a dude from. The same conditions could see and say, oh, he ain't lame, he ain't corny, he from where I'm from, but he doing something positive. And that means I can do it. Exactly. There are multiple like lanes now. There's no question about it. it. You know what I'm saying? Because like I said, in prison, a rack of home, we know coming in, that's our home base. So a lot of rack of DC diggers, and every time that motherfucking wild now coming out, they looking at your motherfucking ass. And then when you got this show right here, man, and you got, yeah, yeah.
Not, great I'm, example. I'm great example. Father example. Man, and it's so it, it's so ironic because y'all here, y'all from the city. We from the same place. You you know, given the history of what the city is, what DC is. Yesterday, I was on the west side of Atlanta, where he from. Yes. And I got a a real you know insight into where he come from. And mind you, this didn't always been my you know tour guide to. The, the city that I'm not from, you know what I mean? Like, he didn't always been there, because he is Atlanta. Los is right. honorary Atlanta, but he a Mississippi nigga, but he's done the same thing for me where he's from sure. yeah. in regards to taking me to his hometown and showing me how things work and yeah. just being able to have somebody that's present that is can give you that type of insight and vision into somewhere that they don't come <clears> from, but be able to show you the identifiable parts of why we the same. Yeah. We don't yeah. usually get to do that, so yeah. me being on a of it on, his, on his side of town and being able to see the similarities and all of the things that, you know, I experienced growing up where I grew up at right. and seeing that this nigga was the same, the same, same shit. shit. So and now, and now it's vice versa. I'm sitting here watching it and I'm like, you was with. Yeah, so we it's blessed, like, my nigga. That's the, like, that's the beautiful blessed. part of, you know, just this type of circle and why it meant so much to me to have you here, Slim, because, you know, I'm a, I'm a exam like here when niggas come home, and I come out the streets for real. Like it's not, you know what I'm saying? Like it's not anything that I'd ever need to talk about because when I go home and when I come back to the city, it's very from my man from Gaithersburg to tell you, like my man from Gaithersburg over there and say he's from my neighborhood. My man say he's from my neighborhood, he's from Gaithersburg for real. But you know, like being it coming back home and coming and seeing the type of reaction that people had of me. It's niggas I used to have real problems with right, right. that is like Slim, I'm proud of you, Slim. Yeah. And that right there yeah, blow my yeah. mind, Slim, like the type of reactions that yeah. I get from people that I know, because I done always been somebody. We, I was, you know, not having a father and coming up in the city. My mother, God rest her soul, put me outside. Like nine years old, I'm outside, I'm catching the bus by myself, I'm yeah. doing all that shit. So you grow up quick where yeah. we from, you know what I'm saying? And the fact that I didn't allow that to be my definition because a lot of us, that's all we strive to be. And there was one point in my life where all I wanted to be was something in my right, circumference, right, right. you know what Washington I mean? Washington one of the places too though, right? Um, where even the, the, the dude that get a job, like it's, you know, it was Chocolate City, you know, still relatively super black, I mean, really black, but it ain't nowhere near as black as it was when we were coming mm -hmm. up. But the point I'm making is our street element was dominant culture. Right, so the, the 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 good guy in from DC, a street guy, it's just it's it's so the 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 the, the, the street element is so so you know uh, pervasive and so it, it it sets the standard for everything else. So it's it's, it's like even the guys who that's just didn't ain't trying to be in the street. This this the street, I got like, it's how it is on DC. Right, a so, whole metro driver, but yes. <laughs> he <laughs> with the <laughs> shit. My mic work at the grocery store, nigga, Sorry, but, and it's everywhere. But his you brother and them outside. I mean, he don't nigga, got no choice. Don't you don't have no choice because it's 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 everywhere. It was everywhere, but it was normal to us. And I'm just glad to be a reflection of where we come from to show that man, that ain't got to be all we yeah, know. Right. It's some exactly. ugly shit out here, Slim. It means so much to be able to come from your city and then leave and then come back. And not be a bitch. Yeah. That's what we that's that's the main thing. We that's a that's a badge of honor when you can come back yeah. where you grew up and, and ain't nobody slapping your shit at you or taking your shit Bye. or calling yeah, you a bitch pussy. Ass nigga, man. That's a that's that's a badge of honor. The gentrification piece now, see though, it really is a parallel though from the era um what happened, the crack epidemic hit DC most severely in any place in America. And so um it destabilized our family so much that that's why we've seen a, a deeper, we, we was the crack capital, we also the gentrification capital. It's an incredible parallel between the two things. And, and what I just mentioned about the street culture being dominant, so many people did not make it. Or so many people went to prison, got criminal records, and they can't acquire the type of jobs that's gonna allow you now to pay you know, 3700 for an efficiency. You feel what I'm Man, saying? You know? what? So this is really what, you know, uh, the, the, like the full circle moment in, in, in his experience, his era, the work that I've been doing, um, what you're doing, 
and what we're trying to influence on the next generation, right? Really is about if you're going to be in, if you're going to be able to be in Washington, D.C., you're going to have to be a high functioning person for all that bullshit. <laughs> There's no room for it. Yeah. Right. We've been, our, our, we got generations and generations of us that's just, it's Lost. a wrap. Right. They gone. Right. You know what I'm saying? We got young, and I've never seen the face of the homeless population in our city is just complete. And I'm, matter of fact, we was downtown here earlier, though, and it looked like shit kind of similar. It's not like the homeless population is trending younger. Yeah, man, they young. They from 24 to 30 and shit. So like that. They're giving up faster, too. Yeah. Yeah. They're giving up faster. And, I, and you got to also understand, like, okay, I was a local little bitty drug dealer, okay, <laughs> compared to right. niggas who were... Sure. That nigga just you feel that. me? That Compared to a nigga who really out here handling business, but I'm like, I'm the little guy who's probably, who was the little guy of the nigga who you gave it to. But okay, you got states, but I'm the little nigga who got streets. But it's like, okay, it's not the same money as it was back then and even, even to today. And it's not going to be even to today. I'm like, if you jumping out selling dope right now, you doing this shit for a lifestyle, my nigga. Man, the game's so fucked up. It's Cause it's not just even selling dope to go to work. And get... <laughs> nah, and guess what? <laughs> Man, like, it's not even. Money. It's yeah. not even. It don't I, I, weigh the same. It don't. I'll tell you what. It don't we, weigh the same. We did a lot of we did a lot of work over the last you know 10, 15 years around what we would call prison reform, criminal justice reform, and like my, my, my brother Sean is here uh, doing work at Dream Corps. And, uh, out of Milwaukee and a lot of other folks that we've been fighting, right? But now the pendulum is now pendulum is now swinging back in the direction of tough on crime. I'm, I'm bringing that up to the point you everybody running around thinking they trying to look sweet on the gram and they get out of there. They are going to burn your ass up. And, I'm, and it's, it ain't going to be nothing that we can do. But they're going to say we gave y'all a chance. Like, yeah. really and truly. I just, I just think that's very, very important to say. that's why we on this motherfucker. We ain't just talking about yeah. shit just to be talking. We trying to save, save motherfucking lives, lives man. man. Especially our mean. young men and women, man. Brothers and sisters, man. This shit is serious, man. It's not a game. And uh, we know with the Republicans, they already got the House. If they get the presidency or get the Senate... You talking? You think tough laws that fuck me around was in place? That shit is coming back, coming back more, 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 uh, more strong. And they not gonna be trying to hear no Tony Lewis Jr. talk about man, nah, that ain't right. Yeah. Maybe because not There's when, not when the can... baby getting shot, yeah. not when grandma getting carjacked. Carjack. You know yeah. what I'm saying? They don't want to hear that. Ain't shit. nobody gonna be trying to hear yeah. that. You know, and I'm already feeling that. Yeah. You know, you hearing and and yeah. the black codes, aka the secret laws to to criminalize us. Like when you say when you got locked up. That one gram was equivalent to a hundred grams. Yeah. So when you out here serving, I want you to know that one gram, you to them, it's a yeah. kilo, my boy. Yeah. You're a little yeah. bitty drug dealer. Yeah. Now you know, but guess Damn. what? Yeah. Now, but guess what yeah. crack for this generation? And I don't mean up to keep, but I, this is important too for the right. youngest. I know who watch this jump. That ghost jump. The ghost club ghost gonna gun. be the crack. They yeah. not because the the drugs ain't that a switch. They gonna, that switch, that yep, beam, that, switch, that, that. That, that clip would would mm -hmm. see like especially in places like DC where you only major yeah hands. exactly we yeah. only supposed to have ten in the joint. They got you got thirty, got fifty on the joint. You got, you got to know your laws, know, know the rules, know the rules. You gotta know the rules. Yes, know the rules. Came home and found out you can have a gun in DC. Yeah. <laughs> you know me, I, I never thought I'd say, we always had the toughest motherfucking gun man, all that came man. home, but then as me and my son talked, you just put it together, the gentrification, white people moving into the communities, they scared, mm -hmm. and you know what they say, oh, we're going to let y'all protect yourself, but us black folks that's been there forever, you can never own a gun. Mm -hmm. Now, all of a sudden, with the gentrification, now you can own a gun in mm -hmm. D.C. Right. for the and, gun, a year each, two years each bullet. Yeah, all that. Guess, yeah. guess, what, if, guess what happens, though, if you a gun owner? And you got a family member who come home and live with you. Yeah, he can get one can't, too. Yeah, uh -huh. but he can't you gotta, live. You got to turn your gun, your gun in. in. Yeah. So, so, see, what, so when we talk about, we talk about how deep this shit go. Time out, Slim. Yeah. 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 Time out, Slim. So I, you know. If you are, are legally able to own a gun in the city and somebody come home from jail and stand with you, you can't have If your I gun. came home, I couldn't live in there with that gun in that house. You got to get rid of the gun or get rid of me. And so... What is it going to be? 
And if you don't know that law, both of y'all so breaking the law. Yeah, yeah. But I had to give it to motherfucking yeah, dogs for your ass. You better yeah. be writing on a motherfucker with that toaster. <laughs> 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 yeah. She ain't on one of the toaster dust on the goddamn toaster. Yeah, no, we didn't tell you that ain't gonna work. Nah, that shit, that shit serves though. Yeah, <laughs> gonna be a nigga look you dead in your face. I eat toast for me if a motherfucker, motherfucker crawl yeah, through this one. You better go at a. Hold him down, mm -hmm. tickle his feet. <laughs> <laughs> but that that's the that's the those are the um when we start talking about the collateral consequences. Right. Right? Families like ours, you gotta endure that kind of shit that people, the normal person, don't even think of that it go that far. Right. You know what I'm saying? Um, but it does. But it does, man. Uh I you know, one of the things I was talking about about like full we call formerly incarcerated people returning citizens in our city, right? Mm -hmm. But people need to just be seen as citizens. You know, if you pay taxes, if you work and you, you contribute to your community, you should be able to have full, all your rights should be restored. Mm -hmm. That go from vote. One thing I'm happy to say in DC, we can, you never lose your right to vote. You can even vote from federal prison. Mm -hmm. um, Thanks, and so, that's hard. So, Thanks. Yeah, you, you know, me and others, people that work to, to make that a thing. But, they ought to use that. They ought to make like, all the prisons should get like an electoral college vote. We're just waiting on the guys from prison. Yeah, right. <laughs> We've got Attica coming in at 48%. <laughs> uh, hold on, guys. Hold on, guys. This could be big. Just getting the numbers from federal corrections. <laughs> Looks like they're going to swing the election. <laughs> they all voted for Rand Paul. <laughs> but that is kind of why, you know, we talk about that's a form of voter suppression. You know what I'm saying? Somebody break the law, why can't they vote? Like, what do you, like, what? They still citizens, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So I'm happy to say our, our homies that's in the feds can vote. 2020 election, my dad was able yeah. to vote, you know what I'm saying? Good um, that's what's up, man. Was it your first time? Yeah. First time. First time. Yeah. We, we never voted know. on the street for sure and never voted in prison until they helped pass, my son and them helped pass that legislation, um, so. Yeah, and hopefully the country can model that, but the rights restoration, I just wanted to say about the full rights restoration. If you don't restore people's rights, you know what I mean? Like, you don't give people the right to be a part of the whole, mm -hmm. and then they act out, if you will, whether that's furthering, you no know, uh, return to criminal, breaking the law, whatever the case may be. How can we fully hold people accountable? You ain't letting them in. In no way, shape, full, shape, or form, and I shouldn't have a more of a right to protect myself and my wife and my daughters than a man who been to prison, who has a wife and, and kids or girlfriend and kids. He's supposed to be able to protect his home. Hey, There's some yeah. good action coming out of Mississippi, though, right? Mm -hmm. Where a federal judge in Mississippi, a dude got a federal beef. He shot a dude trying to come in the house and rob him. And the federal judge said he was not going to charge. He charged with the drug. He said, I'm not going to uh, send you for that gun. And he sent it up to the Supreme Court because the Constitution does not say that if you broke the law, you, you, you can't have the right to defend That's yourself. right. So shout out to Mississippi. Right. You know, they say the, but they say the Constitution overrides. Don't it overrule like the state laws and yeah, shit like that? Exactly. Right. There you go. Hey, hey, Chico, right. I wanted to uh, say to you, uh, you know, my PO officer, she watches the show. So. She was like, and, uh, every time if I leave out of, if I go 50 miles outside of DC, I gotta uh, uh, get her, you know, get her permission and okay. And she was like, so I was like, I'm supposed to be going to, can I go to this 85? So I was, I'm thinking she don't know what the fuck I'm talking. She said, oh yeah, I watch that show all the time. Mm -hmm. that, 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 that Chico Bean, he, uh, da, da, da. she said, they be smoking that shit on that set. Don't go on that fucking set, because I don't want to look on their teeth. <laughs> there is no smoking yeah, on set. No weed yeah, smoke on yeah, set, ma'am. Yeah. We're clean. She a nice, now she a nice, nice fat lady, though, man. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate her, yeah. But she love the show. She love the show, man. Say that show up? funny as shit. What it do? Appreciate it. down here. Let her come. Ain't nothing to candle smoke. Yeah, that's it. Right. You know what I mean? Right. You know what I mean? Too. But oh, before, shit. Before, what before, the shit got me a gift? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. So yeah. happy niggas. Okay. That's the type of way yeah. you fall to this yeah. body. Yeah. You got me something. Yeah. Like, yeah. But before y'all yeah. get out of here, I got to answer, man. Mean. Like, I went, one of the first videos I seen y'all make together with this nigga. Had you in the park doing dips and all that oh. pull-ups at 60 years old and stuff. <laughs> yeah. And he's still out there doing pull-ups and 60 and dips. Like, 
That, what part, you know, as fucked up as the incarceration has been, one of the things that I learned, you know, from having so many people come in and out of my house, in and out of jail throughout my life is the discipline that it instilled. Yeah, no like, doubt. How do you get, from in your opinion, you know, how do you get the, the message to be conveyed, to, the, to get the discipline out here before a nigga got to go to jail to learn? Right, that prevention. You know, hopefully it's, it's by my, my story and others who've done these draconian sentences, man, you know what I'm saying? 34 years, some 20, 40 years out your life. This what can happen to you young motherfuckers who are out there. And I love y'all, lo we love our young brothers and sisters, man, but I gotta keep it real, I gotta, you know what I'm saying? I gotta say what, you know, some of them get mad at me about for saying it or whatever. I ain't trying to scare straight them or nothing, but I'm telling them the truth. That shit is brutal. 34 years, I might sit here and I look, you know, pretty, you know, if a motherfucker ain't know I was locked up, they'd probably be like, no, he's just regular, like, you know what I'm saying? And I am still regular, but that shit has effects on you, man. You know what I'm saying? You can't come through 34 years of incarceration and be unscathed. You can't, you know? Just some of us are less unscathed than others, you know what I'm saying? And with, you know, God help, and of course my son and, and family support, um, I've been able to, you know, survive it, you know what I'm saying? But, uh, you know, again, the shit, no amount of money that I made in the drug game is worth that 34 right. years of my yeah. life. It, it just ain't, man, not even close. If they say, oh, man, everything you had, everything you did, take back that 34 years, give me that 34 years of my life back and uh, fuck the hustling partner, give me my 34 years of life and freedom back. So the young people don't really understand or know it until it happened to them. And they go through this brutal shit, man, and not just them, but your family, what they go through, what I put him through, and you know, my mother, you know, my sisters, and other family members, man, because they hurt with me when I got this 30, you see what I'm saying? They yeah, they had to do that shit with, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it ain't just about you when you, you know, make dumb decisions. And all of us make dumb decisions sometimes. But when you got a motherfucker that's telling you that the, that decision you making or get ready to make is dumb, listen to that shit, man. Yeah. Listen, you know, you might think, oh man, that old motherfucker talking that shit. Okay, I understand that, man, you know? For, your, for those that want to just go ahead and, you know, I'll hear about it, you, you know, because I know what it's going to do, what's going to happen. Yeah, Eventually, sure you know what I'm saying? Now, yeah, yeah, <laughs> no <laughs> doubt. No yeah. Sure, man. He got your back. Oh yeah, and no he told doubt. Me the first time that he came, that even when you came home, he wasn't gonna give up the fight. Yeah, yeah he wasn't he gonna stop fighting that's for why the we, people. We, man. Yeah, we appreciate y'all giving us this platform, man. And to, just like I told him the know, first time, this, he, this platform is always here for. I know y'all gonna do a lot of programs. Yeah, and, no doubt. And activists work in the community, and if y'all ever need a platform to get the word out. Come up oh, here whenever. Y'all more than welcome to do Chico, that. Man. Uh, every, every, every you too, DC. I'm hey, you know, well, Tell like you niggas in prison watching start niggas so tell y'all. That's, that's a you that's know, to make motherfuckers laugh and shit, man, because the atmosphere in prison is always, you know, that doom and gloom shit. Right. But when Wild and I were coming on that motherfucker TV, then Nick and then y'all up there on that, you know what I'm saying? That shit, man, that makes, you know, motherfuckers tuned in, man. So okay. y'all just with that show alone. And I wish this could be like a, a you know, on regular TV or whatever, you know, maybe in the future. But yeah, man, but to, to have laughter, man, and see black men, you know, black people, you know, uh, 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 making shit happen, man. Yeah. Being entrepreneurs, being businessmen and all that shit, that shit huge, man. And I appreciate it. Yeah, 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 no <laughs> doubt. They know, yeah, the wild yeah, that's they that. always yeah, that's they a big part of that What's shit. What's up with too. Justina Slim? That's really yeah, I'm like, yeah. man, come on. It's a welcome. Well, well, yeah, I mean, for real. <laughs> I'm like, that, no. <laughs> like, 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 nigga, get the fuck out of here. But I, I want to say this to you, man, and, you know, like, knowing the legend of you prior to ever coming in contact with your son or, you know, before anybody knew who he was, right. the whole city knew who you were. Yeah. And, you know, you kind of develop your own mentality about who these people are based off of our environment. You right. know what I'm saying? Who they who they were, and we kind of try to liken ourselves to what we thought that you were. And I just want to say, man, I, I'm honored to be able to meet you in person and see how much more yeah. that it is to Tony Lewis Sr. than what we knew that. coming up in the city. And I want to say to you, Sam, man, I don't know, you know, I, you know, we've all been through a lot of shit, but to be able to do what you did and for me to be able to see you doing what you did in the streets, like when I say this man right here is not just talking, when I was a young nigga 
outside. He was the one that one of the ones that we knew that was going to show up that we had to listen to when he came. If he caught us outside doing whatever it was, because he really come from the streets. And it's it's so difficult to toe that line that this man told Slim, like to be in that environment and come from out of the environment, not succumb to it, but not be so separated from it that we're not willing to hear what it is that you say. Yeah, yeah. Man, the fact that you fought so long to get this man home, Slim, and you made it happen, you made it happen. Man, I salute you, man. I thank you for everything that you've done. For my man, it's, 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 it's respectable as black man to black man, bro. What's up? What's up? For real. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Anytime, you know, whatever the lady name is, you can give us her number. <laughs> we'll call her and be like, we got some fruit down here for you. We got to get you to come back down here to get <laughs> We gotta do whatever we need to do, man. We gotta get, we gotta send her some yeah, some merch or something, man. Yeah, yeah. So you can use that as like, hey man, I see you with the shirt on, you know what I mean? Uh, try to go to the go go, I got, I gotta ask you, Slim. But, but now that you, you know, I, it's it's hard for me now. We gotta get you back, cause I got so many. We all, I'm sure, have so many questions that we ain't get to ask this time. But coming out the city, Slim, who number one for you? Go go back. What is it? Black y'all or something? I was telling you that. Black Alley? Yeah, Black Alley. Yeah. Yeah. But Instance was the yeah. Instance. I know it. Joe. I know it. Do you know Joe. what time it is? Yeah, Tell that me, was, do that you was, know? <laughs> that was y'all. Yeah. That was my mama's favorite go-go song, yeah. man. So, you yeah. know. Yeah, Essence, man. And I haven't gotten to, to him since I've been home. I got to, you know, I haven't been seeing where they've been at or nothing, yeah. son, you know, if anything. But the backyard, the black yard, them the main ones. You got to take them to see Essence, man. Yeah, That's, yeah, that yeah no doubt. Loses, man. He start doing dances <laughs> from the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> Nigga <laughs> doing the whole motherfucking hee haw in that bitch. He was like, Pop, slow down, I'm back. <laughs> All I needed was my shit. <laughs> It's all the way, man. Yeah, this, man. Is, this is an honor, man. This is right here. This one of them ones, man. It's an honor and a pleasure yeah. for y'all to come through here yeah, no doubt, and catch man. us up on the story, man. Yeah, yeah. Back. 85 South Show. Tony Lewis Sr., Tony yes, Lewis Jr. Yes, sir. We out of here, man. All right, let's hey. go. Right. Right. Yeah, we got you next door. Right. Yeah. That shit was hard. Yeah. At least that a minute, son. We appreciate that one. We got to produce it. Yeah. We got to be a part of that. Yeah. I mean, all the way. Know that. Let's get a photo. Yeah, right. yeah. No I'm doubt. I'm already. I'm already.